so cool because like people have like edited together the best martial art footage and, and dance oh. footage and
I like I like both. I mean, I like going into the movie. I thought that was cool. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so say the question one more time. Uh, uh, well, the first question was, what was your favorite season or show? Oh, well, I only did the pilot. <laughs> <laughs> That's my very favorite. <laughs> I loved Turbo. I loved Turbo because I got to fight <laughs> outside of the costume. Well, me, I got to fight because in the costume there's some people, so I got a chance to fight. And I loved the movie because I got to fight too. Yay! <laughs> I liked them all for different reasons, but I think just for nostalgia, um, the first, the third season, which is one of the best ones. Um, I was on the show for six years, but I only did Alpha for, for the last three. Um, but, so I like all the seasons that I was there. I'll just say that. But my favorite episode is Alpha. I think I had the most fun doing the Halloween episode because I got to actually eat Igor. I <laughs> <laughs> have fun on my back and do all that physicality with walking around like Igor as Alpha. It was fun. Uh, no, I mean, I, you know, uh, uh, being the Green Ranger, White Ranger was a good transition. I like working with everybody. He asked that question. I got old people, new people here. I like the, I mean, the first SPD. Which is your favorite? Uh, I mean, my favorite season, obviously, was the Mighty Orphan. Mighty Orphan, baby. I was going to say my favorite episode was Forever Red, but that took the SPD things out. <laughs> no, I think uh, one of the episodes I liked was when uh, it was like the black and white one where uh, I turned into a werewolf. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That was cool. It came from Angel Grove. Oh, it came from Angel Grove. That's what it was. <laughs> um, they shot in what was called clusters, so I never knew what episodes or what seasons. Because <laughs> they just sort of cut me in whenever they wanted to do a school. But I, I guess I have to say, I, going back to the costume thing, I like the second year that I was working there because the costumes were better. And uh, it was always a great time to work on that set. It was a great place to be. There's no school like the old school. <laughs> <laughs> I'd say one of the first two. Can I just but say again, it's sort of like... What does stands for? Spatial. Oh, yeah. I didn't know that. come on, you didn't know that? Second question is just the base. Uh, 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 Jason, I was wondering... Um, do you ever kind of feel ripped off of Daniel's lunch or when they do the evil uh, white ranger thing? <laughs> 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 what you mean though? I mean, someone tell me the evil when I was uh, someone. Yeah, what? <laughs> what the evil white ranger? Trent, when Trent got the white. Oh, when they did, when they went back to the season and did all that. Well, when they went back to the other season. No, when Trent was the evil right white ranger during your season and you guys were having a fight. Oh yeah, I see what you're saying. Yeah, no, <laughs> I mean, all, I like all those guys. They were cool. I really enjoyed working with them. They were cool. Dudes. You know, it was good seeing them and stuff like that. I mean, it was just different going back to the show and all those kids kind of grew up watching me. So they were like big fans of Power Rangers. It was just kind of weird going on set and being like, oh, dude, that's the original. Oh, crazy. You know, like, I'm not used to that. I started the show and it was like nothing. And you know, people say, I'm doing Power Rangers. They're like, that's cheesy because that's never going to sell. <laughs> but kids eat cheese. <laughs> like cheese sticks. Every kid likes cheese sticks. Kids eat cheese. <laughs>
I, I just flashed on um, the first movie. I was down there with those guys, and I remember, I don't know if this was your ears and Paul's first day where you guys parachuted into yeah. that site. Yeah. And they had to harness these guys up in these shoot harnesses, and then you guys were hoisted up in a plane. Yeah, I mean, they, so that the illusion would be that they parachuted from the plane, right? Everybody remembers. Yeah. And they got all this stuff together. In I don't like heights. And I was watching those too, and I was thinking, oh my freaking god. Yeah, I mean, I mean, you imagine starting a job. I mean, imagine, hi, well, welcome to like McDonald's. Here's your uniform. Put them on the train. <laughs> <laughs> and then there was the day in the park with I News, and Paul was there, and he was getting smacked in the face and the news stuff. Does anybody remember that one? And they had to take that shot over and over and over. And they didn't use it. They didn't use it in the final cut. And they didn't use it. He, I was watching him smacked in the face, smacked in the face, smacked in the face, and oh, that was tough. That was hard. <laughs> um, I, I like the, the parachute stuff, it's pretty fun too. I like watching me sing. <laughs> oh, she likes watching my face get some no, I, I had fun on that movie. Um, the second movie, remember we doing the rations up there? I should, I should I have that stunt double? I should use it. <laughs> He's like, you got stunt double, I don't need stunt double. Like, All right. You know, you need to go in the rapids, and it weren't that big of a deal, but like, until the guy told me to keep my hands and feet in, it's like, it's like a damn ride. Keep your hands and feet in, you're getting caught in a rock. I was like, what's that? <laughs> you get sucked under the water, just, you know, keep your hands and feet in, so you don't get caught under the rock. Well, this guy, the stunt guy was watching, it was cold on that thing, he had hot tubs for us, you know? So the stunt guy was dry, so I jump in the water, and I'm like, man, I should just use my stunt guy, you know? That's what a stunt guy's for. I didn't even get you, I didn't get paid the extra, you know? And so the, the guy in the rapids goes, all right, you need to come under here, then you need to hit that point, then go under the water, and then hit that point, and I'm thinking, okay, well, it all went by accident, everything. Remember, I was like, under the water, and then they filled the zip line, I'm like, I grab the line, and the water's coming over my head, and I get out, and he's like, oh, that was good, and I was thinking, I didn't plan any of that. People think I did a jump off the rock. I was like, did you do that? Yes. I made a part of the, uh, the first two movies. Remember the movie? Remember? My favorite part is that uh, I'm the first face you see in the beginning of the Power Ranger movie. That's right. <laughs> was Walter being in my heart. <laughs> Actually, we did have one, one scary thing in the, in the second movie. They, they were filming us. We were supposed to be in some uh, underground ship, or some ship that was sinking. And so they had the water coming up on us. Well, someone's brilliant idea was to have us have a phone, co a phone conversation, have a conversation Underwater as the place is sinking. Do you remember this? There's a door. We have to wait for the door to open. Oh, Apparently, yeah. we're supposed to be having a conversation and then get out. We almost drowned. <laughs> and then they cut it. <laughs> and there's the most dangerous people in Hollywood. I remember um, speaking of stunt doubles, um, I don't swim. I know it's pretty sad. But we had a, a, I had a stunt double that was supposed to be uh, snorkeling. And I remember we were filming and I was, you know, watching her go out to the water and she couldn't swim. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, how did she get hired? And, okay. <laughs> um, I really liked the falling from the cliff. I actually, you know, my heart, you know, it was really fun. I liked that part. But it was scary watching him in the rapids. I was like... <laughs>
especially in Hollywood, going to different auditions, you always experience some sort of frustration because you get a lot more no's than you get yeses. You know? So, I mean, it's just the mental, like, it's like mental toughness. You've got to really, like, not worry if you get the job or don't get the job, and you just got to keep it moving, you know? That's kind of how it has to be. One of my experiences was that doing martial arts for so long and doing it for competition, and in the competition world, I was doing pretty good. Yeah, we do. Woo! Are you Red Dragon Karate. We come from the same school. Woo! When I got in front of the camera, it was totally different. Um, doing, for, doing martial arts for film was entirely different, and I hated being told that I wasn't doing it right. Because I was like, you know who I am? <laughs> yeah, I, I knew this very well. And they were like, no, you're not doing it very well. So it, it was frustrating, but... Um, we had great choreographers and whatnot, so it worked out. I didn't have very much martial arts training. I learned a lot when I was on the show, and I, oh, I love, I love learning to play. And, and watching Johnny doing flips off the and I was like, what? And Jason and, and Steve, it was, it was amazing. I, my experience, I just had a lot of fun, and I wouldn't stop until I learned what I was supposed to learn. <laughs> Who so was at the AFO last year? Anybody? I know I see some AFO people. AFOs in Orlando. We have the AFO people right over there. Karen, and you have Eric, and you have the AFO. I was there last year. I bring this up because talk about training. Injuries are going to happen. Yeah. Okay? You got power through your injuries. Don't be mean like me. I'm like with superwoman injuries. But I, the day I went to AFO, the, that night I had surgery on my arm. So I had a distal bicep tear. And so they cut my arm and put, you know, and I had to be there for my fans, so I showed up anyway. Oh. I was so distracted because I was supposed to start my MMA career back then, and I didn't. But I'm glad to go to AFO this year and already have five MMA matches. You got power through all your all your injuries. You know, when, when it, someone tells you it's not going to be done or you can't do it, it's all in your head. I remember I broke my foot, skydiving, you know, skydiving. Snapped all my tendons off my bone and everything. The doctor said that I wasn't, I'm losing 60% of my foot, you know, like foot movement. So I called my brother up. He's like, I'm getting you out of the hospital. My brother was a little crazy. So I'm like, you can't take me. He's like, yeah, I'm taking my brother. So he picked me up, he picked me down the door, and he was like, my arm was like, it was some hook in the hospital. He transferred me up to Valencia Hospital. But, you know, I overpowered that, and I had like 90%. 5% of my backs. I mean, you know, you just got to, when it comes to injuries, you can't be like, oh, I'm trying to get frustrated, you know, because it sets you back. But I say that's that's the advice, you know, you're going to train, you're going to have injuries. And when you have an injury, you can't, you know, take care of it, but, you know, don't be like a really injury for years. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> uh, some of my, my frustration when it comes to training is uh, uh, just mostly in, in working new techniques and not being able to get to where I want to be right away. It's just a matter of, of keep, you know, maintaining and keep, you keep trying to get better. Like, I remember when I, before Jason came onto the show, uh, you know, I, was, I had a, a pretty good jump and spinning back kick. And all of a sudden, he came on, he was like, <laughs> I was like, I gotta get better at that. <laughs> Training martial arts for a long time, it's, it's just it's like anything, you know? You just have to keep doing it. It's like if you shoot basketball, if you shoot three shots, you know, so you might miss all three of them. But if you shoot a hundred shots, you're going to make a lot more. You're also going to miss a lot more, but you'll make a lot more. So. Any advice on yeah, my biggest frustration with training is there's this one guard, man. He will not let me alone. I will cut him. I will cut him. Next question! Our Rangers reboot movie, kind of like they did with like Transformers. Like they make it more serious. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. What'd you guys say? <laughs> oh. I don't know if you can squeeze me into that outfit again. It's so fetching, especially the fish mask. <laughs> you know what? You guys are still fans, and as long as there are still fans, somebody's going to do Absolutely. Power Rangers.
Now, whether or not they'll do it well is another question. <laughs> <laughs> this goes to 12, doesn't it? Yeah. Oh, yeah, we got one. One more time. Oh, we got more time. Hey, you left. Oh, you look great. Lovely outfit. Again, considering that I didn't get to do the series, I left after the pilot, I would absolutely love it. Nothing more. I, I would love that opportunity. So make it happen, guys. Uh, let me just say something real quick. Uh, and, uh, Go back to a somber note, but uh, uh, just so you all remember, I mean, I know we just uh, did like kind of a lot of words for, for Tweet, but we also lost uh, Richard Gianelli, who was uh, early. And, uh, oh. oh, that was a lot of this. Yeah, and, and, and he was the, you know, already ran the juice bar, and, and we had a lot of good times with him as well. I just, I didn't want him to, to go unremembered. <laughs> no, yeah, absolutely. I mean, I do only because coming back to stuff like this, um, there have been so many people, you know, like that young lady, and like just everybody who's come up and says, oh my god, you know, I can't believe I'm meeting you my favorite, or you're my first crush, or whatever. I mean, it's so special to you guys, so it's so special to me. Like, it's, you know, it's something that I really, um, I don't think you ever do anything bigger than something for kids. You know, I'd probably do a million other things in my life, and I don't know that I'd ever do anything that means so much to someone, you know? I, you know, I, I have always felt that I have a small career, uh, but Miss Appleby has given me more than my 15 minutes of fame, you know? <laughs> and um, I just, I can't begin to tell you how grateful I am to all of you who remember my work as Miss Abbey because, uh, you know, it's every actor's dream to have a character that plays. And I guess Miss Abbey did. Thank you. Well, I have to say, I worked with, I mean, everybody here is just so fantastic. I worked with a great group of guys, and some were desperate to be here, but, you know, some of their great working professionals are in other countries doing all sorts of things. I know we just loved our characters. I think they were really sort of super positive role models. Um, uh, I was one of the first, I think, female leaders of the Rangers, so that was a really special <laughs> Again, only doing the pilot, I'm amazed at how many people have contacted me and given me so much love and said, you know, thank you, that was awesome, and uh, I'm really flattered that you guys wanted me here today. Thank you. The whole experience has been a blessing, and I definitely feel like I, I own Tanya and own her. I would like to like own like a percentage of the <laughs> Oh, yeah. <laughs> you are Tommy. Yeah, I think, you know, the bottom line is, I 
casting, we create characters. Well, I'm not. If you look at like Vince Vaughn and a lot of his movies, he's kind of like the same, you know, like it's funny and all that stuff. But then I was, I mean, these guys are from theater and, and stuff. I just kind of created a character that I wanted to create. When I started the show, I had long hair, and my agency made me cut my hair, and then they didn't represent me. Then that went back, and I said, look, they said you need to cut your hair, and I was with Red Dragon. I mean, we got the history. I mean, Red Dragon's like one of the best schools around. It's just an excellent martial arts. We had the best people around. But in Red Dragon, you have long hair, and you got these leather necklaces. Everybody had long hair. My instructor, so to cut your hair was like, oh, really? So I cut it, and I went back to get the, the uh, you know, to get the, get them to represent me. They didn't represent me. They said, here's a script called Phantoms. Audition for it, and we'll call it even. Because I was kind of demanding, like, I ain't leaving. You know? <laughs> like, you have to. I'm on the phone. I'm like, I ain't leaving, man. You know, that thing. So he gave me that, so I booked the show. Then they come back and try to sue me and stuff like that. So, uh, oh. but the funny thing is, they told me I'm never going to book a role with long hair. They said, you need to be the street kid next door, and you can't have long hair. So I grew my hair out. Just point, you know, and I grew my hair out, and I, I, Tommy was kind of me. I mean, I, you know, although it was a clean version. <laughs> <laughs> so, you got to bring your own personality to the role. Yeah. Uh, I, I think it's, uh, as, as an actor, one of the, the most amazing things uh, to do is to create new characters. And, and the characters act was, was very much like me. I mean, they have the same energy. I mean, that's what you do as an actor. You, you bring aspects of your personality to imaginary circumstances and create a character. So uh, I've, I've definitely enjoyed creating the characters act, and, and all, as well as all the other characters I've created over the years, whether they were good or evil or anything. <laughs> you know, being what happened with that skinny you were <laughs> You need two signatures on that pink slip, so uh, whether or not I actually have full ownership, you know, is uh, subject to debate. Yes, obviously it, it's your own personality. Unlike heroes, it has to be an individual. Each hero has to reflect a specific person a fat and skinny guy duo have been around since, you know, it's, it's kind of back to the popular subconscious, you know. Laurel and Hardy, before and end, even for God's sakes, you know. So, Skull and Bulk and Skull are always going to be part of a pantheon of fat and skinny guy, comic duo, baggy pants, slapstick comedy. Um, I have to say, I just love those guys. I'm, at, I'm really, really close friends. Um, with Alan still, who's, uh, who's a black ranger, alien ranger, multi-talented guy. They were just a fantastic group of people. I was so lucky to be there, you know. And they were really positive role models, I think. Also, I love that it was sort of multicultural. We're all different, you know. I come from, you know, the Middle East, and there's, you know, the American guys, and, you know, the Muslim black guy. And there's so many great... I mean, I just love working with those guys. It's really super talented. Jim, incredible comedian. The guy who did the, the Yellow Ranger, the Yellow Alien Ranger, unbelievable talents. And um, I hope that you know, in some of the episodes, looking back, I mean, I, I thought, look at their really cute episodes. I really like them. Um, you see that you know they really they have a lot. I mean, I, I kind of wish that um, that was investigated a little more, so you could see more of their talents. But it was a great group of people. Just extremely fortunate. I, I consider being a working actor being extremely fortunate. Yeah, I'll take five of those and ten. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, it was marvelous. Thank you for that. Okay.